Well, we've been walking through the Psalms and we come now to Psalm 64. And beginning in Psalm 61, we had some messianic Psalms as Christ the sufferer came in and Christ the sufferer came in as the representative head of his people. Psalm 61 through 68, Christ is praying. The Messiah is praying. He's not mentioned as Christ, but he's the representative of Israel. And he's praying that which Israel someday will pray. Now, we begin in Psalm 64 again, and Israel's representative comes bemoaning the attack of the wicked that comes upon him and upon them. And he says in verse 1, Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Preserve my life from the dread of my enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the evildoers, from the tumult of those who do wicked, who have sharpened their tongue, their, sharpened their tongue like a sword. They aim bitter speech on their arrow. They shoot from concealment at their blamelessness. Suddenly they shoot at him and do not fear. They hold fast to themselves an evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who can see them? They devise injustices, saying, we are ready with a well-conceived plot. For the inward thought and from the heart of man are deep. Now, here... In uh, these verses, that was the first six verses of Psalm chapter 64, there is this complaint, if you would, that was given. And it is given, I think, by the Messiah, by the suffering servant. We have a twofold application here, really. It is the heart of the Messiah in his suffering. It's the heart of the suffering servant. You may know that uh, when a modern Jew reads the 53rd Psalm, the Psalm of the Suffering Servant, and those of us who are Christians say, how can you not see? see the Messiah in that, in the 53rd Psalm. They say, oh, we see Israel in the 53rd Psalm. You know what? I think we're right, and I think they're right. I think both of these are pictured, that Israel as the child of God will be a suffering servant in a sense, and here the Messiah comes and speaks what we know as Christians to be a twofold application as Christ, the suffering servant, the Messiah rejected of his own, comes into his enemy and he, 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 he lifts his complaint to God. Preserve my life from the dread of the enemies. Hide me. And it then talks about, think of the things that the Pharisees did, the scribes and the chief priests as they put Jesus to death. Does secret counsel of evildoers sound like something that they would do? Does the conspiracy of those who do iniquity sound like uh, what was accurate in the days of the passion of Jesus Christ, the arrest of Jesus Christ? Sharpened their tongue like a sword and had bitter speech as an arrow? That sounds like the uh, words of the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees, doesn't it? They uh, shoot from concealment at him and uh, they, that is they sneak up to him in the middle of the night sounds like them doesn't it hold fast to themselves with an evil purpose it sounds exactly like what is happening there devise injustices saying we are ready with a well-conceived plot that's exactly what happened to the suffering servant but in the Psalms, these are words that are representative of words that Israel will speak. And the day will come when Israel's enemies will come at her in the same way. And I believe Israel's representative has already prayed the prayer that they will pray then in that day. The secret counsel and the conspiracy that is up against them, the tongue and the sword, the, the, the MO of secrecy, all will come to about to play in the day of Jacob's trouble, in Israel's own day of being the suffering servant. But we don't need to fear because we go on verses 7 through 10 and we see that there is victory against the enemy and for the one who suffers. I like just the first few verses, words of verse 7 where it says, but God will shoot at them with an arrow and suddenly they will be wounded. Oh, don't give up when you see the righteous flourish, the workers of iniquity. God someday will shoot at them and suddenly, like an arrow, they will be wounded. Verse 8, they will make him stumble. Their own tongue will be against them. That is, they're going to turn against each other. And all who see them will shake the head. And verse 9, then all men will fear.
When the enemies of God are taken down, ultimately in the battle of Armageddon, all men will fear and they will declare the work of God. They will consider what he was done, what, what he has done. Verse 10, the righteous man will be glad in the Lord and will take refuge in him. Oh, in a, in, a, in a broad sense, that's talking about redeemed Israel and those who are the righteous of Israel and really the righteous of uh, any, in any land, any nation, that the day will come when the righteous will be glad in the Lord that they took refuge in him. But I think in a firsthand account, this again is, is indicative of, of the representative here and the righteous man. The blameless man or the perfect man, as is spoken of earlier in the passage, is the one who is our Messiah, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus will be glad in the Lord and he will take refuge in him. And uh, the upright in heart will glory. Think of Jesus on the cross. And there he is being crucified. And yet, what's his last words? Into thy hands I commit my spirit. The righteous man will be glad and take refuge in him. The day will come when the Jewish people will pray those words. They'll look up to Lord God Almighty and coming through Jesus Christ will say, I am righteous and I'm glad to take refuge in the Lord. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. This is Psalm 64. I'm Dr. Randy White. Thank you for being with us today.